Hey Transit, can you guys believe that it's been 8 weeks since we met at the Fridge Warehouse? That's a long time and we miss you guys, your small group leaders miss you and we can't wait till it's safe to gather again. But for now, we're glad to be here online with you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so just a quick recap before we jump into part 3 of Into the Unknown. Week 1, we said we're all afraid of the future but the Lord is with us wherever we go. Week 2, we said that the future is still unknown, but that God has a plan, and that plan is the best one for us to follow. Now, today, we are going to go into part 3, but if you've missed any of those two weeks, don't worry, you can check them out here on our YouTube channel. You can just pause this video and go check them out first. But yeah, let's jump right in. Um, grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. Remove any distractions, listen to what God has to say to us today. I'll see you guys after. Hey guys, my name is Stu. I hope you guys are doing great today. I want to start off with a question. Do you guys ever worry about the future? Well, we grew up worrying about the future so much that we resorted to the worst fortune teller of all time, this toy called the Magic 8 Ball. That's right, this piece of plastic, we would ask it questions and it has this little die in there that would give us the answers. Like we would ask it, hey, are we gonna have taco salad for lunch today, please? Am I gonna make the basketball team? Is Georgia ever gonna win the national championship? Uh-oh, the outlook does not look good. I know, this is the silliest thing in the world, but we would worry about the future, and I know, personally for me, that I would worry about things that were coming up in the future. I would worry about school and tests that I would have. I would always worry that I was gonna fail a test. If I had a concert coming up because I played the violin, I would always worry that no matter how much I knew my part, no matter how much I practiced, that when the lights came on and I was standing on stage, that I would forget my entire part. I even worried about things that I had no business worrying about. Things that are fun, like going to a party. I would worry, am I dressed the right way? Are my friends gonna be there? Now maybe you don't worry, you're someone, you kind of look at the future and you're like, it's all gonna be okay. But maybe right now in this season, when this future seems so uncertain, maybe you're finding yourself worrying a little bit more than normal. Like what will school be like when you go back? When will you go back? Will your friends be there? Will you still even have the same friends? Will you be able to give them a high five or you're still gonna be social distancing at that time? What, maybe it's not even school that you're worried about, but at home, your mom or dad have lost their job and the future of your family seems so uncertain. Or maybe it's a relative or a friend and they're sick and you're worried about their future as well. You see, the future has a way of causing us to worry because it seems so uncertain and outside of our control. But the amazing news that we want to remind you about today is the future is not outside of God's control. And yes, we're human. And yes, we're going to worry from time to time. But even as we face an uncertain future, we can experience peace and hope and confidence even today. But how do we do that? I keep seeing these signs on the side of the road that say everything's going to be okay. But how do we know? How can we experience that today? Well, for the last couple of weeks, we've been in this series called Into the Unknown, and we've been studying the life of Joshua. Joshua is leading God's people, and they're headed toward this land that God has promised them and been promising them for years. And they're almost to the promised land when there's something in the way, the Jordan River. And this is not like a small little lazy river at your local water park. No, 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 no. This river is overflowing. It's like class five rapids. There's no way for them to get across. But then God comes to Joshua and tells Joshua that he's gonna do a miracle through him. So Joshua gathers 12 men together, 12 priests, to pick up the Ark of the Covenant. And the entire nation of Israel is told to follow closely behind. And these men head straight towards this crazy, raging Jordan River. And the minute that they step in, a miracle happens. The waters begin to recede and the waters part and the entire nation of Israel crosses over the Jordan River on dry riverbed and they go into the promised land. And if it was you and me, we'd probably be running and doing our best end zone dance and never look back. But God stops them because God wants to do something so important right here so that they would never forget the miracle that he did. Here's what God did. 
Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you in the future when your, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. You see, God knew that in the future, the Israelites would be facing a time that seemed uncertain. And they would wonder, can God be trusted? And see, we all begin, we all forget sometimes that God is faithful. And so what God wanted them to do is to have something, a memorial to look back on and remember, oh yeah, God helped us get across the Jordan River. Of course he can be trusted with our future. You see, that's the lesson for you and me today. When facing doubts about our future, turn and remember of what God has done in our past. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can do that, but I'm just going to give you two ways. The first is to reflect. Think back on a time where God has shown up in your life. Maybe it was a prayer request he answered for you. Maybe it was a time in your life when you just felt super close to God. Maybe it was at our transit camp. I would challenge you to talk to God about that memory and invite God into that moment. The other thing you can do is to read, to read your Bible. I know, when I was in middle school, I thought the Bible was just an old, dusty book, but the Bible's amazing. It's story after story after story of God's incredible faithfulness to you and to me. And if you don't know where to begin, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, wow, it's the four accounts of Jesus's life. It's incredible. And it talks about God's incredible faithfulness to you and me through his son. And ultimately what we're doing when you reflect and when you read, what you're doing is you're inviting God into your worry. You're inviting God into your concerns. And when you invite your God into your worry, what ultimately happens is he begins to replace that with peace and with hope and with confidence. And I don't know about you, that sounds amazing. So as you go to small group, I wanna challenge you just to open up about the things that you're worried about. We're so thankful for you. Your small group leaders can't wait to see you on your Zoom calls and we'll see you guys next week. I really like that message. When facing doubts about the future, turn and remember what God has done in the past. And I'm sure God has done a lot of good things for you and your family. And all we have to do is just hold on to the promises that he has for us hold on to his faithfulness because he is faithful no matter what and we just have to reflect we just have to remember um, i can't wait to discuss more with you guys in our online small group i'll see you guys there at 2 p.m if you're new here please join our facebook group and follow us on instagram so you can get updates and send us a message if you want to get connected and if you want to get plugged into our online small group thanks for joining us have a nice weekend bye